we really need to step back and think about how in the 2016 election, till the very day that Donald Trump was announced as the president, there was a large portion of Democrats who thought he had literally no chance in winning. Obviously super unconventional the way he ran. It's always interesting to see how this celebrity businessman ran against professional politicians and literally made them look silly on stage. But one of the things that we really need to start to appreciate more is the role that social media really had in Donald Trump creating his own narrative. You see, Donald Trump was a master at controlling the media headlines. As soon as they tried to hit him with one thing, Donald Trump talks about how when you're a billionaire, you can grab him by the, the cat. And how the next day in media, he'd think of some crazy take that would send the media direction right off of that into something else. You see, when we really start thinking about Donald Trump and his rise to prominence, and even if you want to talk about the Russian hacking and them starting these Facebook groups and them starting these hate groups online to even spur up Donald Trump's popularity, we really have to sit back and look at social media as was one of the serious factors of Donald Trump becoming president in 2016. In my, in me, in my humble opinion, Twitter actually had a big contribution to Donald Trump's campaign. And if you start to look at their stock a little bit, you'll see how it even started to rise a bit because a lot of people were recognizing on how impactful this Twitter platform really is. That's why if you really want to know the future of politics and where this country is going, where the country of America is going when it comes to politics, you really have to think about one platform and really start to take it seriously. But before we get into that, my name is Fly Stewie. This is the Uneducated Investor Podcast, where we connect pop culture to business. Feel free to drop a like, hit that like button, it really helps these videos out, it helps them spread the word, subscribe, and hit that notification bell if you want three investing videos a week. Now flight crew, let's get better at business together. Now it's hard to really see the future and what's going to happen 10 years from now. Like the year 2030, we could all literally be in flying cars for all we know. However, you do get glimpses of the future and what's to come in certain areas. You know, when YouTube was out, we didn't really see it as the future of video, but we kind of saw glimpses as these clips start to go viral, as people called it. You know, no one knew that YouTube was going to literally be the second biggest search platform of our day. Facebook went from nearly just having family photos to now it's like the number one communication platform with their messenger app just doing ridiculous numbers. And these companies starting from their infancy, we never really knew how they would start to spring and grow. Twitch is super interesting and this is the platform that I think is really going to start to shape politics in the future. You see traditionally Twitch is a platform that is all about gaming. People game and then other people watch them game. They watch them play Fortnite, Mortal Kombat, NBA, FIFA, League of Legends. The top gamers in the world have these Twitch pages and you can see the best of the best in these games play the games that they're best at. However, one of the really interesting things about Twitch was starting to notice the type of content that was making its way to the platform and starting to kind of rival the basically majority gaming content that was already on Twitch. They had this interesting ASMR category where they would whispers and make really sort of soothing noises in the mic to help people go to sleep or help create ambiance in your apartment. These type of videos would really start to blow up. Also, you'd start to have this sort of, they have this section called IRL or in real life and it started to get dominated by this like cam girl slash gaming girl in fusion where people who were essentially being cam girls would basically show their boobies in the stream and really accentuate that sexuality to build an audience. And this is a lot of, you know, stirred obviously a lot of controversy, but this became a legitimate category on Twitch. But one of the categories I found so interesting that started to spur up 
on Twitch was online politics or just political policy debate. And my whole theory of Twitch becoming this very essential platform for online policy debate or for the next presidential race in 10 years from now comes down to one person and one person only. His name is Destiny. What? What are, what is this? I know, how fitting of a name. Destiny, I believe, used to be a League of Legends streamer. He was one of the best at the game. I believe back in the day, he used to play StarCraft, and you know, he's been dominating the gaming scene ever since, creating a very lush, luxurious, a very nice presence for himself online. However, it seems that in the 2016 era time period, we know when Donald Trump was in politics, a lot of people started getting into politics, and you would see a lot of creators their videos where they would just give their political opinion basically started to spring up in popularity. And what happened is a lot of people who normally necessarily wouldn't be that interested in politics started to actually build a very big political following. And this is kind of what happened to Destiny. It seems almost that like his plan was never to go into politics. However, just because he had very great takes and opinions on policy points, he started to build a political audience of people that wanted to hear him talk about politics. Now I've seen political figures get big online, whether that's someone like the Young Turks or that's someone like Ben Shapiro who has a great big presence on YouTube. But something was so different about Twitch that it really started to catch my eye on a bigger, in a bigger way. And that's because normally you're streaming gaming content for 12 hours and in live time, you can ask people questions and see people say and do things live. But when it came to Destiny, watching him go through and perform live debates with other people on a variety of economic topics really started to capture my imagination and made me realize that this is a bigger deal than a lot of people are talking about. Because not only could you see Destiny debate people, but you saw his pre-debate and his post-debate prep. So before some debates, there would be times where he would have people come on and talk about political issues or economic issues or economic systems like capitalism or socialism. And a lot of time he would literally have PhD economists and people who are subject matter experts in the exact thing that he wanted to debate in. So all of a sudden, this guy who had no real big college education or anything like that became almost a PhD level educated scholar when it came to debating some of these main issues. So I think Flight Crew, now you're starting to put it together. Could Destiny or someone like Destiny become a future president? Really start to think about this. When you are constantly prepping for debates, building the most soundproof economic policy, and attracting an audience base of the most educated people online to come and build your economic policy for you, not only are you building a super big feedback loop of very educated, smart people and building a great policy base of people, but you're building a group of people who them themselves and you're attracting a group of people who them themselves are probably going to go into politics or have some sort of influence in politics future down the line. And in similar fashion, how Ben Shapiro has become one of the biggest names in right wing politics and how in 20 years I could clearly see if he wanted to take a shot at a governor role or if he wanted to take a shot as a mayor role or even a presidential role or maybe a senator easily just off name power and brand alone he would have a legitimate shot at pretty much making it farther than someone of his political experience probably would make it with destiny the same is true 20 years down the line when his audience of phd economists or people who watched his channel because they were interested in politics and now hold political positions, having this extreme network of people who remembered how dominant this destiny guy was online with these 
politics and policies and how great he was able to reference economic papers and did his thorough research and had a team around him when he did online debates. He's building this basic powerhouse of a network that if he was to run in 20 years, it wouldn't seem that far fetched to say that the next presidential candidate or the next president might be from Twitch. As always, Flight Crew, remember the best, most brightest investors are the uneducated ones. Why is that? That's because the uneducated investor, they never stop learning. And if you liked this video, make sure to hit that like button and hit subscribe for more content three times a week. I really appreciate your guys' likes and I appreciate you guys rocking with me. Now, what do you think? Do you think that it is possible for a Twitch streamer to really start to dominate in the political space? Comment below, let me know. And as always, we flight crew have to take off.